fellow Wondering Hearts, I hope you're doing well today. I'm Karina and this is Explore Blue Wild. on pet photography because we're all stuck inside and you might want to take more fun pictures of your furry friends or you might be a wildlife photographer who's just looking for animals to take photos of. So I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on how to take awesome photos of your pets. These tips can be used with either a phone or a DSLR so whatever you have in your pocket or around is a great camera to use. <laughs> You never want to use flash for pet photography because your photos are going to look like crap and also you're going to scare your dog, cat, or other adorable animal and it's not going to turn out well for anyone. So you're going to want to raise your shutter speed to at least 1 over 100th if you're doing still portraits of your pets and 1 over 250th if they're moving. If your pets are moving, put that shutter speed as high as you can and just Try to adjust the ISO because you don't want it to get too dark. These are things that you can change either in the camera app of your phone or you can download a third party camera app to change the shutter speed. Obviously on a DSLR it's just a dial. To find the best light. So you can take photos of your pets really anywhere, indoors, outdoors, but the best light is either going to be indoors near a window or another good light source. If it's at night, make sure they're near a lamp or other light. And the best light is going to be outdoors. If you want even light, outdoors in the shade is awesome. Have a lot of patience when you're photographing your pets because they don't really understand why you're pointing a camera at them and all they care about is either playing, being with you, or doing whatever else they want to do that day. Focus on their eyes. So if you have a phone, that's where you're going to tap that little box or circle on the screen. It's on their eyes. If you have a camera, obviously, you change the focus on that. So you just want to focus on their eyes. Unless you're deliberately focusing on another part of their body for like artistic reasons. But in general, the rule is with people and animals, even if the rest of them is out of focus somewhat, if their eyes are in focus, it's going to be considered a good in-focus image. The number one most important tip I'd give you guys for any form of animal photography and works really well for pet photography is to get on that animal's level. So with cats and dogs, this usually means you're going to be on the floor. If your cats have like a cat tree or something, that makes it easier because you can have them on the tree. If you have smaller animals, put them up higher. But you always want to be on eye level with that animal unless you have a specific reason for shooting down or up at them. There are three, I guess, categories of pet photos that I want to talk to you guys about. There are posed, playing, and interacting. Now, posed, I said I don't like to pose animals, and this is true, but I consider posed photos, animal or photos where the animal is generally in a still position for a long amount of time. So this can either be sitting, sleeping, lying down, the animal is not super active. If they're lying down, you can either take a shot of them on the floor, or this is one of the instances where taking a shot straight down at the animal might work out really well because dogs can lay in some pretty funny sleeping positions, cats can too. And if they're sitting and posing, you can either shoot a little bit um, above their head and straight down, um, but you're still lowering your camera and then you get kind of that like bigger head, smaller body look on the animals, which is kind of a fun look to try to achieve. And if they are awake and kind of like posing for you, one great way to get them to look at the camera is to have a treat or their favorite toy and you're going to hold it like right above slash behind the camera. My camera's here. The treat or toy is going to be like right here so that their eyes are going to be trained right at the camera. If you have it over here or over here or over here, their eyes are going to be looking wherever that treat is. And so if you want to have their eyes looking away from the camera, then that's a good way to do it. But if you want their eyes looking at the camera, you got to have the treat right behind your camera. <laughs> 
Obviously, our pets are very active, well, most of them, and they love to play, and some of the best, most fun pet photos you can get are when your animals are active and playing. So one of the tips for this one is to get them playing their favorite activity or with their favorite toy, kind of like use that prop as an interesting way to get them engaged. And when they're playing, definitely do not try to get them to pose or anything. Just follow them around, take as many pictures as you can. These are especially going to be the shots where you're going to have tons of bad ones, and like one or two great shots. So you're going to follow that pet around, stay on their level, it'll probably get dirty. If you have another human around that can help you, this is awesome because you can get that human to like play with a toy or throw the ball or something and get that pet running around and having a great time. One trick, if you are shooting solo and you want some fun playing photos of your pets and they like playing fetch or similar, is that you can throw the ball or the toy or whatever, like quickly crouch down, get your camera out, and then take pictures as they're running back to you. And running back to you shots, you can get some pretty good shots of that pet. Your pets are going to have great relationships with you, the people in your household, with other animals in your household, and if they're not great, they'll at least be interesting relationships. So it can be really fun to capture these. You can have um, pictures where your pets are either playing with each other or snuggling, or you can take pictures of other people in your house playing with their pets or snuggling together. So just capturing those interactions and moments with the people and pets and other animals in your house can be a great, great photograph. When you're taking photos of your pets, thinking about the story that you're trying to tell. Are you trying to show how they are relaxed and sleeping and this is a really soft, calm moment? Or are you trying to tell the story of like a really energetic playtime? You know, your pets are running around and maybe some motion blur or some imperfections in the photo are a lot more acceptable. So when you're doing pet photography, think more about the story of the photo that you're telling rather than the exact technicalities of the photos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can check out this video on fun, crazy adventures and more videos of photography tutorials coming up soon. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos. There'll be new videos coming out every Tuesday and Saturday. Bye!